I was born Harriet Wood in New Orleans, but to my great relief, we left the South and went to Michigan, where I was raised with my seven brothers on an Indian reservation. When I was a young girl, we moved away from the reservation and I discovered this wonderful thing. Big cities with lights, music anytime you wanted, all sorts of excitement. So over my family's objections, I became an actress. I went from theater to theater and ultimately ended up in the South. Then there came an exciting adventure. I was approached one night by two men who offered me $300 to be disloyal to the union. I told them I must think about this because it was far, far too dangerous to say this. But in the back of my head, I thought, ah, a chance to serve my country. So I went to the provost marshal in Franklin and I said, I've been approached by two men who wish me to be disloyal. So he told me, take the money, make the toast the way they want it, and then go become friends with them so that we can find out who these copperheads are. So the next night, I stepped out in my men's clothing and at the end of the play said, God bless Jefferson Davis and God bless the South. Pandemonium exploded. There were fist fights. I did not expect that. The stage manager, who did not know what I was going to do, walked out immediately and fired me on the spot. But that was good because as I walked out weeping, I was approached by the same two men and they introduced me to a lot of Confederate sympathizers. And from there, I was able to begin my spying career. Of course, I had to be a delicate lady when I was amongst them because otherwise, how could they ever, ever trust me? And as men will do around a pretty woman, they forgot to watch their tongues. I found out about lack of supplies. I found out when the troops were going to be moved and when supplies were expected. I made such friends with one Confederate officer that he took me into camp and wanted to become my lover. He suggested that I follow him around camp to camp and provided me with a Confederate uniform so I could pretend to be a man. He even suggested that I wear a mustache. And then one day, I walked into a tent and there was all this information. Papers on shelves, papers on desks, papers within books. So I snatched up what documents I could and I put them in my boot top. And I walked out. But apparently I folded them a little too tight and was limping. And as I walked away, the pickets saw me. And unfortunately, they found the pages in my boots. Well, my lover came back and all of the officers, and many began to yell, hang her, hang her. So I fell into a swoon at my lover's feet. He caught me up and carried me into town, and they put a guard on my door. General Braxton Bragg actually came to my door and knocked on it, and he said, you've been playing some pretty sharp cards there, young lady, but I'll play the sharpest. I claimed that I was just too tired and too weak, and the landlady stood in front to defend me. Later, Nathan Bedford Forrest himself came in and said that he knew that I was a spy and he couldn't wait to have my pretty little neck snapped by the hangman's noose. To my great fortune, the Union Army swept through town and drove the Confederates before them, and I was able to be saved. And when they found out who I was and what I had done, then I got breveted major on the spot. It came to President Lincoln's attention, and he made me a true major with a pension. At the end of the war, I went to find my husband, who I am married, as an actress, only to find that he had died, as had our two children. I was destitute. I ended up in San Francisco, but no one would hire me. At this point, I was in my late 50s. I became a chore woman. I lived in pain with arthritis and took to morphine as my only solace against the pain. And then one day, I succumbed to an accidental overdose. Fortunately, the ladies that came to lay out my corpse and wash me so that I could go into eternity clean went through my papers and found out that I was the Major Cushman. And they contacted the grand old party of the army. And they gave me a wonderful funeral. And they laid me to rest with the other officers in the Presidio, where I lie to this day. And the only things written on my tombstone are the name Pauline C. Fryer and the words Union Spy.